Here's a question that Clover asked on our Discord page. And you can go to our Discord channel anytime you like. We've got different folders. Oops, this cord. Doing good. I hope you're doing well also. You can come to our chat anytime you want and just type in exclamation mark Discord and the link will pop up there. The link will be in the description of this video after it's been loaded up. But basically in our personal finance folder in heavy topics, uh, Clover asked the following question that how interest rates, a rise in interest rates or is, is going to affect our current economic system. Interest rates is relation to in to inflation. No, interest rates should be um, in relation to inflation to a certain degree. That's what centralized power likes to do. But the way you need to think about interest rates, centrally controlled interest rates, is banks, capital as power, centralized institutions that control monetary policy okay of a nation basically use interest rates to manipulate the economy to social engineer a society okay as well as uh, participating in crony capitalism where certain segment of society is able to acquire cheap money right basically free money helicopter money some people call it or whatever it is just drop money basically can get money at no cost and then they can take that money okay take that currency and put it into systems where they make interest or at least higher interest than how much is costing them to get the money right so let me give you let's clarify that for a second right so interest rates right now function like this. You have a central body that decides what the interest rates going to be. Okay. This central body is controlled by banks. 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 Right? There are different types of banks, but in general, banks control this body right so these groups of people that are sitting on the boards of directors and a lot of them large corporations and stuff like this control the central body let's call this the fed right let's call it the federal reserve bank and these are privately owned institutions right now there is such a thing called government here gov is a little thing over there no one pays it attention because the original definition of government was by the people for the people but it's not really this is this this thing here that runs a nation is basically controlled by these people here right so these people here control the monetary policy of this nation right and what happens is they set the interest rate and the interest rate basically is the control of money right okay yeah i couldn't find a question either i think it's in our discord elder god i looked up but basically he wanted to know how interest rate will affect our society right that's what we're talking about here right so these private institutions right control the monetary policy of a nation and that basically means how much money is in the system right they control the interest so when there's low interest other institutions whatever these institutions might be okay some of them are banks banks some of them are companies some of them are just institutions some of them are people right some of them are this some of them are that they're just different whatever is in the economy really that gets the first pick right 
the money goes towards these guys right whatever the interest rate is going to be now there's a lot of people that are controlling these companies right tech companies tech companies right wall street wall street right there's a lot of people that are sitting on the board of directors of these companies or own these companies that are also on the board of directors and have stakes in these banks that control the interest rates and vice versa a lot of people here have stake in all of these companies right so what happens is these guys decide the interest rate of a nation and that decides how much money is going to be pumped into the system and when the interest rates are really low whatever they may be these people well whatever the interest rate might be these people get first dibs at whatever interest they're collecting right and then these people these might be the banks might be private investment funds or whatnot these people filter out the money or these institutions filter out the money into the general economy right Right. me and you in terms of inflation in terms of debt right oh my god hey this problem isn't the place for this but i unfortunately slept in and missed the live stream this morning uh i was planning on asking you about inflation oh there it is that's right that's the question elder god awesome so this was the question that was posted on our discord uh, I was planning on asking you about inflation and the Bank of Canada planning on raising interest rates. What what your opinion on all of that was and how a raising interest rate will help, as they say, combat inflation. But uh, what else that could affect? If it's too much to type, let me know. Maybe I'll try to ask you next live stream so we can get your response in a video format. Awesome. Oh, that's, that's the one elder god awesome yeah that's it sorry i stepped away and i couldn't control no problem clover thank you very much elder god for tracking it down okay so recap these private institutions really control the federal reserve that is supposed to represent the government which is supposed to be a body centralized body put to put there by the people for the people but it's not because this doesn't really have too much say regarding what the fed does because the fed is mainly controlled by these private institutions and organizations these guys control the money flow into the system by manipulating the interest rate okay and the institutions people organizations that get first dibs on the amount of money when the money is coming out or who's being flooded with money right because these people have a lot of debt as well so what they can do is sell the debt to the fed right the fed buys their crap junk right and then these people their wealth goes up right because they're getting cheap money and then they filter out the money to the people who are supposed to control the government but they don't right these people flood the money or pass on the money to the people right now guess what whatever interest these guys are getting this money at this interest rate is much higher right so for example right now we take an extreme example if we take an extreme example fed's fund rate i don't know what it is so in europe it's negative right negative right but let's assume it's one percent right now that the federal reserve is making money available to these institutions right well the amount the the money that these people can get from these institutions the interest rate varies depending on how good your credit is and which institution you're dealing with right so the best interest the lowest interest that any of these people will ever get a chance to get money at would be their mortgage because there's back securities on that right your land your houses your collateral right and 
mortgage rates are anywhere between, I don't know what they are. We're not carrying mortgage, right? We don't do mortgage, right? Anywhere between, let's say, if you're lucky, if you're absolutely lucky, probably 4%. 4% and if you're dealing with credit card companies you're paying close to 28% interest right okay. so these institutions get interest at 1% if not lower and they give it to the people at anywhere between 4 to 28% that's a nice scam right one reason it's a scam because these institutions are usually too big to fail. So if they loan out a ton of money, because there's people working here, right? There's little, little bankers and money managers and stuff working here. And a lot of them don't just make a certain set salary, right? Their income is also dependent on how much money they lend out, right? So they take a little cream off the top for certain amount of money that they lend out okay so there's lots of hands in the cookie jar they're taking scraping a little off here scraping a little off here right the burden falls on the people right the burden falls on the people that's a huge differential right there are trillions of dollars being made here especially when you consider 40% of the money supply in the United States all time for the last hundred years was released uh, at least 50 years was released in 2020 okay for 2020 2020 2021 40 percent of all the money out there was just released flood pipe into here right stocks went up land went up inflation so what this does this thing here the flooding of the money creates inflation let's put inflation here inflation in the united states and canada as well the accepted inflation right let's read some of the banks bank get money from the government and from regular citizens from opening accounts yeah the regular citizens open accounts is a trickle of the money they get the regular citizen opening up an account in a bank of a hundred dollars allows the bank because through fractional reserve banking to lend out at least a hundred times that amount right so private citizens opening up bank accounts in banks is only anywhere between one to ten percent of the actual money if that that the banks are able to play with right because these guys just print money right I hear from this former investment banker that banks profits 80% of trades they make. Yeah, they basically never lose. It's great. Uh, they do, but if they lose, they just hit up the government. And the government through the Fed just gives them a shitload of money, free money, right? Bails them out, right? So they're too big to fail. They make risky bets. There, there's no doubt banks lose money, right? Or they can lose money, but there's no repercussions for them they get more money from these guys right okay did you know that percentages are reversible 16 percent of 25 is the same thing as 25 percent of 16. Da, 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 25. is it uh, you, i do the calculations all the time i don't try to memorize it yeah because of distributive property distributive property yeah 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 ronnie cool Thanks, Joe. I like that. I got to remember that. Right. So check this out. Inflation in the United States right now, because that's the one I've been tracking, is running at six, seven percent, six percent. And that's accepted to seven percent inflation, CPI, Consumer Price Index. Right. It's much more than that, by the way. It's into the double digits, easy, easy. It's running anywhere between 15 to 25 percent. Okay. What that does, what this does, right, makes this mean that it's crazy free money, right? 
Because if you're getting money at 1%, you could put it anywhere, anywhere. I don't care where, right? And you're going to make money because inflation is 6 to 7%, right? Investment-wise anyway, right? So you could buy assets, right? You could buy assets and you're making money, right? Now, the problem is Joe Blow here, right? That's the official they're recognizing. This is the bank rate or the the interest rate for the Fed for in the institutions. Now, if you take your money and put it into a bank, right? Uh, savings account, savings account. Right? If you put your money into a savings account, at best, you're getting like 0.5% interest, right? So just imagine you want to save money. You don't want to take any risk. Is that the primary? I, I, it's it's got to be like around 1%. I think it's around 1% depending. I'm taking an average. Like your country, wherever you are, figure out what the prime rate is right now. Right? As, as far as I see a prime rate, it's negative in many places. Right? They're, they're charging people money if you put your money in a bank savings account they don't you have to pay the bank money to put money in the bank it's crazy in canada is um 0.25 is it 0.25 they're saying it's going up to 7.5 uh, end of year yeah it's going to go up like a lot of people saying they can't raise raise the interest rates because a lot of institutions will go bankrupt and a lot of people will go bankrupt because they can't afford a kick up in interest rates right because everyone's mortgaged out uh, margin out to the max right margin debt right now or debt right now in Canada is the most it's ever been right so just imagine raising the interest rate from 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 percent to 1.75 percent ah <gasps> what is that going to do what is that going to do to people right people have mortgages at four percent right if prime rate goes from one percent or point in canada 0 0.25 percent to 7.1 or 1.75 percent what that's going to do is going to kick up the interest that people are going to have to pay on their debt, right? But these people here are leveraged. They, they're maxed out, right? Their highest debt in Canadian history on Canadian citizens, right? So where are they going to get the extra money to pay this debt? Because that's going to kick up. Right? If this is going up by how many times? 0.5 is one time. 0.75 is two times, three times, four times, five times, six times. Six, seven times. 0.25, right? It's going to bankrupt people, right? There's going to be... Uh, we need, we need to have society. Oh, yeah, from Mr. Robot. Oh, so shit rolls downhill. They raise the rate and everyone with debt will end up paying more. Exactly, Clover. Right? Now, the, their idea of raising interest rates is to calm inflation. Right? Because they're saying, oh, we're going to raise interest rates. So what that's going to do is stabilize inflation which is basically make things not increase in value or cost as much right so a jar of honey that you were paying for you know if you were buying it for ten dollars let's say if you're paying six to seven percent by the way this was per month basis last month it was seven percent in the united states i forget what it was in canada okay that's huge right 
that's annual comes out to ridiculous amount right but if you're paying for a jar of honey ten dollars last year right now it's probably you're paying around fifteen dollars right if you raise the interest rates their hope is that next year it's not going to go up to 2250 or whatever it is right it'll stabilize around fifteen dollars or maybe go up to sixteen dollars so even though you're going to be paying more interest in your debt you're going to stabilize or control inflation so you're not paying as much for certain things right only just started season two uh, the reset looks like it may <laughs> okay so that's one of the effects of inflation stabilizing prices which to a certain degree is good it will increase savings account interest that people get to a certain degree it's good okay it will devastate those who are in debt which is pretty bad right but one thing it will do it was it will help out these people make a shitload tons more money why because these people here are sitting on a lot of assets a lot of capital okay as long as they're not leveraged right and they control the money supply and they get first dibs at the money right the differential that they're getting money at relative to what the general population gets money at is huge right so when these people start going bankrupt these people buy these institutions buy out that stuff which is something we've seen in the past and is happening right now too they buy out all these assets right so for example lockdowns and what's happened to the economy in the last two years a lot of mom and pop shops are closing their doors right a lot of private business is closing their doors and what's happening the business that the people were spending in their community the money that they were spending in their community is going into this these institutions so these institutions are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger right and who are these institutions these institutions are the same people that control these guys right sit on the board of directors like black rock right black rock right they own shares in a lot of these companies right so they control these they control the money supply so wealth stays here right wealth stays here the burden is carried here right the burden is carried here that's what happens when centralized institutions use interest rates to control the economy of a nation or a region or the globe right it centralizes wealth because people here don't have any control of this right of the fiat currency of this right however however right now systems are changing where there are alternative ways of doing business inside here that severs this link right let's use red to do this right oh, oh, severs this link and says we don't need your fiat we got our own currencies barter system cryptocurrencies different types of assets and this becomes a self-contained economy okay outside of the centralized power that is what we need right that's how people obtain their freedom right without being without being under the control of interest rate manipulation right this could be gold silver commodities cryptocurrencies collectibles collectibles value your your personal um services you provide to people in here right and what is what is the key to for these people to uh maintain their freedom right to not become slaves to the system and really this is huge 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 the people we have to make sure that 
currency does not become 100% digital. We cannot buy into a centralized digital currency. Okay, we have to make sure that cash privacy, right? Cash is always an option in an economy. We have to make sure that every transaction does not go through the their system, right? Because if every transaction goes through their system, they can they can do whatever they want to your wealth, anything they want to your wealth, including seizing it, right? Digital currency, Allah God says, digital currency is slavery, right? Hundred percent digital currency is slavery. You need to, we need to make sure that for us to be free, cash is always an option in a society. Okay. I hope that's sort of a, gives you an idea of how interest rates are going to play out in this thing. Um, Sun Clover. That seems like a familiar pattern. Isn't that what happened during the Great Depression? The masses suffered and the rich bought everything up. Yeah. And this happened in 2008, the financial collapse scam as well, right? Red Cross decentralization. <laughs> oh my God, Ronnie. If currency becomes digital, there will be uh, an entity that's going to have an easier time to track all of our transactions, I think. Yeah. The thing about digital is, it leaves a trail it leaves a trail and they can turn it on and off anytime they want right oh you didn't do what the central institution told you to do well you don't have access to your bank account right oops it's pure slavery right yeah that was fantastic thank you brother my pleasure son clover i hope and we could talk a, talk a lot about this uh, later on and we can definitely bring in some numbers to take a look at the CPI we did this stuff in our personal finance videos by the way right and if uh, the, anybody wants to know you can go to our um, sensor tube channel and we have a personal finance playlist and the first eight videos or so sort of lay down a lot of the things that we talked about but in a lot more detail and we're using examples especially the CPI and inflation and uh, investments and stuff uh, Gordo one two three thank you I learned a lot in a short amount of time awesome very happy thank you for being here Ronnie technology is always evolving I think blockchain will become archaic one day yeah agreed I agree Clover funny you mentioned 2008 that's around the time Bank of Canada lowered the rate to what it is right now yeah it, they flooded they flood they gave their people so much money so my, I wrote a lot of articles during that time uh, talking about what was going on and talked about the collapse that was coming in 2000. I started articles, writing articles about that in 2006 and 2007. I put pieces together warning people that there was going to be a serious, serious crash in the system. Uh, a year and a two to two to a year and a year previous uh, pre crash, right? There was, there was a lot of people that messaged me and said I saved them a lot of money because they gave them a warning about what was was about to happen, right? You just got to follow the money and you, you see what's going on. Hello, I'm a snake. The biggest flaw I see about digital currency is that if, if the electric grid goes down, how are people going to trade with the digital currency? The government can easily do that to render us broke instantly. Indeed, hello, I'm a snake. And look into Cyber Polygon right that is definitely something in the works blank one zero two two thank you very much for the twitch prime sub 15 minute warning wow 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 this was a good live stream right on right on mathematics right on right on mathematics great questions by the way gang uh fun times fun times i hope you enjoyed the discussion um fun to do we did a couple of physics questions and some economics fantastic math in real life that is what is needed gang thank you for uh being here thank you for the follows thank you for subscribing
uh, for those of you that are subscribed thank you for the questions thank you for the discussion mods thank you for taking care of business